पेज नंबर 116 लेसन 9 मैडम राइड्स द बस इट हैज बीन रिटन बाय वर्लिक कानन बिफोर यू रीड इन दिस सेंसिटिव स्टोरी एन 8 ईयर ओल्ड गर्ल्स फर्स्ट बस जर्नी इनटू द वर्ल्ड आउटसाइड हर विलेज इज आल्सो हर इंडक्शन इनटू द मिस्ट्री ऑफ लाइफ एंड डेथ शी सीज द गैप बिटवीन our knowing that there is death and our understanding of it activity number 1 look at the words and phrases given here under then put a tick against the ones you think you will find in the text a set of passengers get on the bus get off the bus platform tickets please a roar and a rattle a row of seats slowing down to a crawl blowing a whistle number 2 you must have traveled by bus more than once what can you see from a fast moving bus given here are some suggestions speak briefly about some of these scenes or about other such scenes that you have seen or write a sentence or two about them rivers green fields hills roadside shops marketplaces railway tracks moving train vehicles on the road trees a crowd clothes in shops and animals page number 117 part 1 of the chapter there was a girl named valiamai who was called valli for short she was 8 years old and very curious about things her favorite pastime was standing in the front doorway of her house watching what was happening in the street outside there were no playmates of her own age on her street and this was about all she had to do but to valli standing at the front door was every bit as enjoyable as any of the elaborate games other children played watching the street gave her many new unusual experiences page number 118 the most fascinating thing of all was the bus that traveled between her village and the nearest town it passed through her street each hour once going to the town and once coming back the sight of the bus filled each time with a new set of passengers was a source of unending joy for valli day after day she watched the bus and gradually a tiny wish crept into her head and grew there she wanted to ride on that bus even if just once this wish became stronger and stronger until it was an overwhelming desire valli would stare wistfully at the people who got on or off the bus when it stopped at the street corner their faces would kindle in her longings dreams and hopes if one of her friends happened to ride the bus and try to describe the sights of the town to her valli would be too jealous to listen and would shout in english proud proud neither she nor her friends really understood the meaning of the word but they used it often as a slang expression of disapproval Over many days and months Valli listened carefully to conversations between her neighbors and people who regularly used the bus and she also asked a few discreet questions here and there This way she picked up various small details about the bus journey The town was 6 miles from her village The fare was 30 paise one way which is almost nothing at all 
she heard one well dressed man say but to valley who scarcely saw that much money from one month to the next it seemed a fortune the trip to the town took 45 minutes on reaching town if she stayed in her seat and paid another 30 paise she could return home on the same bus this meant that she could take the 1 o'clock afternoon bus reach the town at 1:45 and be back home by about 2:45 on and on went her thoughts as she calculated and recalculated planned and replanned now the glossary on page 118 wistfully means longingly kindle means set alight like a fire here means feelings a slang expression means some informal words often used within a close group discreet questions means careful questions page number 119 number 1 what was valli's favorite pastime number 2 what was the source of unending joy to valli what was her strongest desire number 3 what did valli find out about the bus journey how did she find out these details number 4 What do you think Valli was planning to do? Now the lesson further. Well, one fine spring day the afternoon bus was just on the point of leaving the village and turning into the main highway when a small voice was heard shouting, "Stop the bus! Stop the bus!" and a tiny hand was raised commandingly. The bus slowed down to a crawl. and the conductor sticking his head out the door said hurry then tell whoever it is to come quickly it's me shouted valli i am the one who has to get on by now the bus had come to a stop and the conductor said oh really you don't say so uh, yes i simply have to go to town said valli still standing outside the bus and here is my money she showed him some coins okay okay but first you must get on the bus said the conductor and he stretched out a hand to help her up never mind she said i can get on by myself you don't have to help me the conductor was a jolly sort fond of joking oh please don't be angry with me my fine madam he said here have a seat right up there in front everybody move aside please make way for madam it was a slack time of day and there were only six or seven passengers on the bus they were all looking at valli and laughing with the conductor Valli was overcome with shyness avoiding everyone's eyes she walked quickly to an empty seat and sat down now the glossary slack time a time when there is not much work page number 120 may we start now madam the conductor asked smiling Then he blew his whistle twice and the bus moved forward with a roar. It was a new bus. Its outside painted a gleaming white with some green stripes along the sides. Inside the overhead bars shone like silver. Directly in front of Valli above the windshield there was a beautiful clock. The seats were soft and luxurious. Valli devoured everything with her eyes. but when she started to look outside she found her view cut off by a canvas blind that covered the lower part of her window so she stood up on the seat and peered over the blind the bus was now going along the bank of a canal 
the road was very narrow on one side there was the canal and beyond it palm trees grassland distant mountains and the blue blue sky on the other side was a deep ditch and then acres and acres of green fields green 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 as far as the eye could see oh it was all so wonderful suddenly she was startled by a voice listen child said the voice you shouldn't stand like that sit down page number 121 sitting down she looked to see who had spoken it was an elderly man who had honestly been concerned for her but she was annoyed by his attention there's nobody here who is a child she said haughtily i have paid my 30 paise like everyone else the conductor chimed in oh sir but this is a very grown up madam do you think a mere girl could pay her own fare and travel to the city all alone wally shot an angry glance at the conductor and said i am not a madam please remember that and you have not yet given me my ticket i'll remember the conductor said mimicking her tone everyone laughed and gradually wally too joined in the laughter the conductor punched a ticket and handed it to her just sit just sit back and make yourself comfortable why should you stand when you have paid for a seat because i want to she answered standing up again but if you stand on the seat you may fall and hurt yourself when the bus makes a sharp turn or hits a bump that's why we want you to sit down child i am not a child i tell you she said irritably i am 8 years old of course of course how stupid of me 8 years me the bus stopped some new passengers got on and the conductor got busy for a time afraid of losing her seat valli finally sat down an elderly woman came and sat beside her are you alone dear she asked valli as the bus started again valli found the woman absolutely repulsive such big holes she had in her ear lobes and such ugly earrings in them and she could smell the betel nut the woman was chewing and see the betel juice that was threatening to spill over her lips at any moment now the glossary on page number 121 haughtily means proudly mimicking means copying repulsive means causing strong dislike page number 122 of who could be sociable with such a person yes i am traveling alone she answered curtly and i have got a ticket too yes she is on her way to town said the conductor with a 30 paise ticket Oh why don't you mind your own business said valli but she laughed all the same and the conductor laughed too but the old woman went on with her drivel is it pop is it proper for such a young person to travel alone do you know exactly where you are going in town what's the street what's the house number you needn't bother about me i can take care of myself valli said turning her face towards the window and staring out the glossary here curtly means showing displeasure drivel means silly nonsense oral comprehension check number 1 why does the conductor call valli madam number 2 why does valli stand up on the seat what does she see now number 3 what does valli tell the elderly man when he calls her a child 
Number four, why didn't Valli want to make friends with the elderly woman? Part three, the same page. Her first journey, what careful painstaking elaborate plans she had had to make for it. She had thriftily saved whatever stray coins came her way, resisting every temptation to buy peppermints, toys, balloons and the like. And finally she had saved a total of 60 paise. How difficult it had been, particularly that day at the village fair, but she had resolutely stifled a strong desire to ride the merry-go-round, even though she had the money. After she had enough money saved, her next problem was how to slip out of the house without her mother's knowledge. But she managed this without too much difficulty. Every day after lunch, her mother would nap from about one to four or so. Valli always used these hours for her excursions as she stood looking from the doorway of her house. Page number 1 to 3 Or sometimes even ventured out into the village. Today, these same hours could be used for her first excursion outside the village. The bus rolled on, now cutting across a bare landscape, now rushing through a tiny hamlet or past an odd wayside shop. Sometimes the bus seemed on the point of gobbling up another vehicle that was coming towards them or a pedestrian crossing the road. But lo, somehow it passed on smoothly, leaving all obstacles safely behind. Trees came running towards them but then stopped as the bus reached them and simply stood there, helpless for a moment, by the side of the road, before rushing away in the other direction. Suddenly, Valli clapped her hands with glee. A young cow, tail high in the air, was running very fast, right in the middle of the road, right in front of the bus. The bus slowed to a crawl, and the driver sounded his horn loudly again and again. But the more he honked, the more frightened the animal became and the faster it galloped, always right in front of the bus. Now the glossary on page 122. Thriftily means spend money carefully. Resolutely stifled means suppressed or controlled with determination. Page 123. Ventured out means went cautiously, courageously. Page number 124 Somehow this was very funny to Valli. She laughed and laughed until there were tears in her eyes. Hey lady, haven't you laughed enough? called the conductor. Better save some for tomorrow. At last the cow moved off the road and soon the bus came to a railroad crossing. A speck of a train could be seen in the distance, growing bigger and bigger as it drew near. Then it rushed past the crossing gate with a tremendous roar and rattle, shaking the bus. Then the bus went on and passed the train station. From there it traversed a busy, well-laid-out shopping street and, turning, entered a wider thoroughfare. Such big, bright-looking shops. What glittering displays of clothes and other merchandise. Such big crowds. Struck dumb with wonder, Walli gaped at everything. Then the bus stopped and everyone got off except Walli. Hey, lady, said the conductor, aren't you ready to get off? This is as far as your 30 paise takes you. No, Wally said. I am going back on this same bus. She took another 30 paise from her pocket and handed the coins to the conductor. Why? Is something the matter? No, nothing is the matter. 
I just felt like having a bus ride. That's all. Don't you want to have a look at the sights now that you are here? All by myself. I'll be much too afraid. Greatly amused by the girl's way of speaking, the conductor said, But you weren't afraid to come in the bus. Nothing to be afraid of about that, she answered. Well, then, why not go to that stall over there and have something to drink? Nothing to be afraid of about that either. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Well, then, let me bring you a cold drink. The Glossary on page 124 Thoroughfare means a busy public road. Merchandise means things for sale. Page number 125 No, I don't have enough money. Just give me my ticket, that's all. It'll be my treat and not cost you anything. No, no, she said firmly. Please, no. The conductor shrugged and they waited until it was time for the bus to begin the return journey. Again, there weren't many passengers. Oral Comprehension Check Number 1 How did Walli save up money for her first journey? Was it easy for her? Number 2 What did Walli see on her way that made her laugh? Number 3 Why didn't she get off the bus at the bus station? Number 4 Why didn't Walli want to go to the stall and have a drink? What does this tell you about her? Part 4 of the chapter Won't your mother be looking for you? The conductor asked when he gave the girl her ticket. No, no one will be looking for me, she said. The bus started and again there were the same wonderful sights. Walli wasn't bored in the slightest and greeted everything with the same excitement she had felt the first time. But suddenly she saw a young cow lying dead by the roadside, just where it had been struck by some fast-moving vehicle. Isn't that the same cow that ran in front of the bus on our trip to town? She asked the conductor. The conductor nodded and she was overcome with sadness. What had been a lovable, beautiful creature just a little while ago had now suddenly lost its charm and its life and looked so horrible, so frightening as it lay there, legs spread-eagled, a fixed stare in its lifeless eyes, blood all over. The bus moved on, the memory of the dead cow haunted her, dampening her enthusiasm. She no longer wanted to look out the window. She sat thus, glued to her seat, until the bus reached her village at 3.40. The Glossary on page 125 Spread eagled means spread out. Haunted means returned repeatedly to her mind or was impossible to forget. Page number 126 She stood up and stretched herself. Then she turned to the conductor and said, Well, sir, I hope to see you again. Okay, madam, he answered her, smiling. Whenever you feel like a bus ride, come and join us. And don't forget to bring your fare. She laughed and jumped down from the bus. Then away she went, running straight for home. When she entered her house, she found her mother awake and talking to one of Wally's aunts, the one from South Street. This aunt was a real chatterbox, never closing her mouth once she started talking. And where have you been? said her aunt when Wally came in. She spoke very casually, not expecting a reply. So Wally just smiled and her mother 
and aunt went on with their conversation. Yes, you are right, her mother said. So many things in our midst and in the world outside. How can we possibly know about everything? And even when we do know about something, we often can't understand it completely, can we? Oh, yes, breathed Valli. What? asked her mother. What's that you say? Oh, said Valli, I was just agreeing with what you said about things happening without our knowledge. Just a chit of a girl she is, said her aunt, and yet look how she pokes her nose into our conversation, just as though she were a grown lady. Valli smiled to herself. She didn't want them to understand her smile. But then, there wasn't much chance of that, was there? The Glossary on page number 1 to 6 Pokes her nose means takes an interest in something that doesn't concern her. This story was translated from the Tamil by K. S. Sundaram and illustrated through several pictures drawn by the famous cartoonist R. K. Lakshman. Page number 127 Thinking about the text Number 1. What was Valli's deepest desire? Find the words and phrases in the story that tell you this. Number 2. How did Valli plan her bus ride? What did she find out about the bus? And how did she save up the fare? Number 3. What kind of a person is Valli? To answer this question, pick out the following sentences from the text and fill in the blanks. The words you fill in are the clues to your answer. Number 1. Stop the bus! Stop the bus! And a tiny hand was raised. Blank space. Number 2. Yes, I... Blank space. Go to town, said Valli, still standing outside the bus. Number 3. There's nobody here, blank space. She said haughtily, I have paid my 30 paise like everyone else. Number four, never mind, she said, I can, blank space. You don't have to help me. I am not a child, I tell you, she said, blank space. Number five, you needn't bother about me, I, blank space, Valli said, turning her face toward the window and staring out. Number six. Then she turned to the conductor and said, Well, sir, I hope... Blank space. Number four. Why does the conductor refer to Valli as Madam? Number five. Find the lines in the text which tell you that Valli was enjoying her ride on the bus. Number six. Why does Valli refuse to look out of the window on her way back? Number seven. What does Valli mean when she says, I was just agreeing with what you said about things happening without our knowledge. Number eight. The author describes the things that Valli sees from an eight-year-old's point of view. Can you find evidence from the text for this statement? Speaking. This story has a lot of people talking in it. The conductor jokes and laughs with Valli. Some passengers try to show their concern for her and her mother and her aunt spend time chatting. Read the conversations carefully. Then think of similar people or similar situations that you have experienced. Mimic a person or persons who spoke to you saying what they said along with your replies. Page number 128 Writing Write a page, about three paragraphs, on one of the following topics. Number one. Have you ever planned something entirely on your own without taking grown-ups into your confidence? What did you plan and how? Did you carry out your plan? Number two. Have you made a journey that was unforgettable in some way? 
what made it memorable number 3 are you concerned about traffic and road safety what are your concerns how would you make road travel safer and more enjoyable in this lesson what we have done related the story of valli's first bus ride what you can do number 1 the students should be given 2 or 3 days to collect old or used tickets from their friends relatives and acquaintances they could be bus tickets train tickets plane tickets cinema tickets tickets to cultural events etc by the time they finish the lesson they should be able to get a good collection in place get them to make a collage using as many as possible of the tickets collected on a sheet on a sheet of poster paper this can then form the basis for many interesting activities classification according to type of tickets for what or price how much etc the most desirable tickets the tickets no one wants etc let students think of more ways to classify them let students think of more ways to classify them get students to write a paragraph with the collage as base and their imagination as guide number 2 you can also ask the students do the following number 1 in the story valli has to save money and make plans to be able to ride the bus in pairs discuss how you spent your pocket money last month did you spend it on yourself or on someone dear to you number 2 valli's enthusiasm is dampened and the memory of the dead cow haunts her in groups discuss an incident which may have troubled or discouraged you page number 129 The Tale of Custard the Dragon This poem is written in the style of a ballad a song or poem that tells a story You must be familiar with ballads that narrate tales of courage or heroism This poem is a humorous ballad close to a parody Read it aloud paying attention to the rhythm Belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little grey mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon and a real yo truly yo little pet dragon Now the name of the little black kitten was Ink and the little grey mouse she called him Blink and the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard but the dragon was a coward and she called him custard custard the dragon had big sharp teeth and spikes on top of him and scales underneath mouth like a fireplace chimney for a nose and realio truleo daggers on his toes belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and blink chased lions down the stairs Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage but custard cried for a nice safe cage Page number 130 Belinda tickled him she tickled him unmerciful Ink blink and mustard they rudely called him Percival Belinda tickled him she tickled him unmerciful Ink, blink, and mustard. They rudely called him Percival. They all sat laughing in the little red wagon at the realio, truleo, cowardly dragon. Belinda giggled till she shook the house, and Blink said, "Weak," which is giggling for a mouse. Ink and mustard rudely asked his age. when custard cried for a nice safe cage suddenly suddenly they heard a nasty sound and mustard growled and they all looked around mooch 
cried Ink, and O cried Belinda, for there was a pirate climbing in the window. Pistol in his left hand, pistol in his right, and he held in his teeth a cutlass bright. His beard was black, one leg was wood. It was clear that the pirate meant no good. Belinda paled and she cried help, help, but Mustard fled with a terrified yelp. Ink trickled down to the bottom of the household and little mouse blinked strategically mousehold. But up jumped Custard, snorting like an engine, clashed his tail like irons in the dungeon. With a clatter and a clank and a jangling squirm, he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. The pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon. He fired two bullets, but they didn't hit, and Custard gobbled him every bit. Page number 131 Belinda embraced him, Mustard licked him. No one mourned for his pirate victim. Ink and blink in glee did gyrate around the dragon that ate the pirate. But presently up spoke little dog Mustard, I'd have been twice as brave if I hadn't been flustered. And up spoke Ink and up spoke Blink, we'd have been three times as brave, we think. And Custard said, I quite agree that everybody is braver than me. Belinda still lives in her little white house, with her little black kitten and her little grey mouse, and her little yellow dog and her little red wagon, and her realio true leo little pet dragon. Belinda is as brave as a barrel full of bears, and ink and blink chase lions down the stairs. Mustard is as brave as a tiger in a rage, but Custard keeps crying for a nice safe cage. This poem was written by Ogden Nash. Ogden Nash wrote over 400 pieces of comic verse. The best of his work was published in 14 volumes between 1931 and 1972. His work is perhaps best described in this poetic tribute by Anthony Burgess. He brought a new kind of sound to our literary diversions and didn't care much about breaking the poetic laws of the Medes and the Persians. He used lines, sometimes of considerable length, that are colloquial and prosy, and at the end presents you with a rhyme. This bringing together of the informal and the formal is what his genius chiefly loves. I am trying to imitate him here, but he is probably quite inimitable. Page number 132. Glossary. Grog means a drink typically drunk by sailors. Gyrate means to move around in circles. Thinking about the poem. Number 1. Who are the characters in this poem? List them with their pet names. Number 2. Why did Custard cry for a nice safe cage? Why is the dragon called Cowardly Dragon? Number 3. Belinda tickled him. She tickled him unmerciful. Why? Number 4. The poet has employed many poetic devices in the poem. For example, clashed his tail like iron in a dungeon. The poetic device here is a simile. Can you, with your partner, list some more such poetic devices used in the poem? Number 5. Read stanza 3 again to know how the poet describes the appearance of the dragon. Number 6. Can you find out the rhyme scheme of two or three stanzas of the poem? Number 7. Writers use words to give us a picture or image without actually saying what they mean. Can you trace some images used in the poem? Number 8. Do you find the tale of Custer the dragon to be a serious 
or a light-hearted poem. Give reasons to support your answer. Number 9. This poem in ballad form tells a story. Have you come across any such modern song or lyric that tells a story? If you know one, tell it to the class. Collect such songs as a project. Writing Have fun writing your ballad. Gather information. Choose, decide an idea, theme. Organize your materials under characters and story and then write. Revise and edit your ballad to make it entertaining. Use the following guidelines to write your ballad. Point number one. Purpose of writing the ballad. To entertain and interest. Point two. To whom I am writing. Decide for whom you are writing. Point number three. How should I structure features? For example, tell a simple narrative. A few major characters. A strong rhythm and rhyme. May have a refrain, that means single or two lines repeated often. Divide into verses. 